Open. Second. Do I have a second? Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight to begin our August Selectman's meeting. Um, we're going to jump around a little bit as we move through this because we've had additions and I'm going to try to get Doug out of this. So, any board committee reports? Yes. Ah, Eric, <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you doing? Huh. Will you state your name, please? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eric Swan, 14 Old Farm Way, Chair of the Municipal Building Committee. Um, the report from the Municipal Building Committee is that in the last meeting that we met last week, we discussed the schedule from uh, the 17th to get to April 26th, and the dilemma of trying to figure out uh, whether to fully pursue rapidly the uh, process that's required by the state law for the selection of the OPM. Um, which I do believe is a good idea. I do believe some people think that the OPM or clerk of the works or the term clerk of the works is a little bit in the past and the OPM that's being brought forth with the effort of this law based on a um, qualification selection process could provide um, and the municipality feels that somebody needs to provide an outside opinion of what the Municipal Building Committee has done, what all the boards and committees have vetted and put forward so the residents have a third party opinion. We're still working on the feasibility update. We're still, we've gone through the program. Um, the CSS Architects is updating the, the conceptual options. They're reviewing the program. We're then going to take that and send that to a third party estimator to get their opinion or a separate opinion of cost for construction. That will then give um, the Missile Building Committee um, data in which I can plug back into and then update the full project budget and recommendation to the Board of Selectmen and to the residents. So, you know, we, we Ms. Bullen Committee said it was going to hire consultants. We did add some additional funds. We didn't add a ton of funds for a ton of consultants. Um, we are, some of that cost is being um, used by CSS architects to update the report. Some of it's being used by third party estimators uh, and some of it was assumed to be left over a little bit. So if we engaged somebody, whether it was actually the OPM or um, a consultant selected just for a short period review, that was the intent of getting to annual town meeting. It would be great if we could have the time to go through and, and, and go through the, the process which wasn't rushed and which we missed something in terms of finding the right OPM in order to be on board from now until the rest of the project, whatever that may, project may be. They have experience in these types of municipal projects. They have the person we're looking for or the company we're looking for has experience in police stations, in town halls, and fire stations, and municipal complex. Um, they understand the level of architectural design, the quality of construction that is typical for towns like ours. They can bring in other consultants um, to help provide a basis of review. Finding that right person and getting the RFP, which is about 17 pages of detailed steps organized is a process, getting our feasibility report done is a process. <laughs> Um, I think as I understand and, and in talking to the Inspector General's office and documents that they've published that we, we as part of the feasibility report have some leeway to hire a consultant. We've already hired CSS architects. Um, other people have, may have some other opinions about the OPM but there is a chart that clearly lists that says you need to select the OPM before you select the designer. Then it lists that's in bold and that's required and then there's several other tasks and scopes in terms of review and budgeting and programming that aren't in bold and they're not required but they could be offered by the OPM services. So 
I have a little bit of a di dilemma. Certainly, we could do both, and I think we're, we certainly are within the intent of the law. With the nature of public bidding and this process, if we do hire somebody and hire somebody that has the right experience, I'd hate to, to cross the line of perception that we've then precluded that person from, from submitting on a qualifications basis to be our, our OPM. So you can't have it both ways. And obviously, we'd like to hire the best person. That's the whole intent of the laws. You're not just signing somebody up for the lowest fee. You're finding the right person to do the job. Then you negotiate the fee. And the point of finding the right designer and the right architect is the state wants you to hire an OPM that's familiar with that process to help guide you. Because with the OPM and with the designer, that's where all the heavy lifting is done to make the project really what it is. So I think after our last meeting and saying that we're here today on the 22nd, that somewhere either on the 12th or by the 12th, we'll have a, a committee recommendation. We have a meeting on the, I believe it's the evening of Tuesday the 5th, which is being scheduled for the Municipal Building Committee. And we'll have a decision in terms of a recommendation of this process at that point. On the 26th, um, <clears throat> also between that time, we would hope that we would have uh, almost the uh, feasibility report put back together, if not uh, the a draft of the recommendation. So we're, we're pushing hard to get a lot done. Obviously, if we don't, then the schedule is going to drift, and the process of actually selecting the OPM is going to have to to move out. And I can, you know, can see it working lots of different ways. The point is, is that we're trying just to get a third party and through the third party and costing effort, uh, through the feasibility study, uh, presenting that, or even having the architect present his feasibility study to the public, um, I would think would, would be a good way for residents to understand exactly how and why things were developed. I mean, the architect we selected has um, police station and fire station and town hall experience and is currently working on some state police projects. So they, you know, as the number of architects in Massachusetts that have that experience, probably a handful, and they're one of them. So they could be the consultant that we're already engaged with, uh, and it wouldn't be out of sequence, or someone wouldn't perceive that we've <coughs> hired somebody or given them favor, it's part of the process. So that's where I am. It's more of a dilemma, and I don't really have a question for you, but I think in, in terms of what Tracy will speak up is that January starts financing discussions and so there'll be some joint meetings and the municipal building committee wants to be part of those joint meetings with the board of selectmen and FinCom and everybody, planning board, and just whatever we need to do to um, discuss and present the recommendation. I think in, in, in closing we've had um, also in the past meeting, we've had some people that had stood up on the Saturday and recommended renovating Town Hall and were gung-ho for other kind of projects and modular, well, that they've done their own assessment and now have said that maybe they don't think that's the best option. So through our process and engagement of the public and meetings and having people speak, um, that, that is one, one person's opinion in town that has sort of worked itself out through the process, which is a, a great thing to have happen. Um, there has been talk of engaging uh, the fire station. I believe it was quite clear that the engagement of the fire station where we had this police station town hall project previously that seemingly took a left turn and engaged the police and the fire company next door. Um, I've said all along that was originally what we had started out to do and because we couldn't negotiate or come to terms or an understanding, we then moved on because the issues downstairs mostly in the police department, aren't getting any better and they get worse by the day. So something needed to be done and so we moved forward with uh, a new town hall, new police station to solve that. Uh, I, I would have to say that some of the people have spoken and that the engaging the fire station now I think is a perception issue with still the understanding of, of what, what the fire company is or what both fire companies are in town, where they're going, how they're being run, that that's a whole bigger ball of wax than just trying to solve a facility issue. Um, and it's your issue. <laughs> it's the town is issue. So uh, I'm all with, well, and with the understanding of, of understanding what 
the conditions are downstairs, understanding the conditions of this town hall here, and having understood the conditions of the fire station, something is going to happen sooner or later or eventually. But as of now, I don't think it's the focus or I think it's the people's will that the Municipal Building Committee's heard to engage them. Um, that said, it's still something could happen over there. And, and this spot, Morgan Avenue, selected um, through a thorough review process by the Municipal Building Committee, vetted with all the boards and committees in town, um, the moving forward and connection of the sewer, where you already have water to this building, um, makes this a long-standing facility, adding the police station to the town hall for a mission-critical facility that has a sewer hookup that won't have issues down the road. It's certainly a step in the right direction. Um, but in terms of a bigger picture, with the property that's available, someday we would hope that, that something could happen here, which makes this site even more favorable with additional parking, or at least the understanding that if, even if the fire station remains private, that parking issues could be solved and shared between the two, um, between Town Hall and the fire company. Um, I had something else I wanted to say, but I think I forgot it. Uh, and that's, that's where we're headed. So we're, we're, we're putting back the assessment, feasibility report, sorry. We're trying to get that all back together. We get that. We add the soft costs on. We have a complete project, and we're able to present the project to you. And with your help and all the other towns and boards and committees, we present it to the residents. The, and I'll have a, a firmer answer on OPM or hired consultant in order to get that third-party opinion um, by your first meeting in January. Sounds like a lot of work without the holidays. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But, uh, <laughs> that's, well, that's what we're into, and I mean, that's, that's just where we're going. I think the one thing, the closing sentence that I wanted to say is, as we thought, as we understood the facility issues, and there will always be facility issues in town, and that we try to solve them and not kick them down the road, the benefit that we've looked at, whether it's police and town hall, police and fire, uh, any combination you want is the idea that we're combining a facility for savings in spaces, uh, in building costs, in hiring the people to manage the building costs. Uh, there's less exterior, even though it's a bigger building, there's actually less exterior to take care of and maintain in a combined building. Uh, there's less mechanical spaces. We could get away with one elevator instead of building separate facilities where we might need two depending on the site, um, that's the real synergy and effort that the Municipal Building Committee is trying to bring and value back to the town. It's not that the Municipal Building Committee wants the biggest building in town. We just want to be able to combine them and not drag them out and provide that value and, and savings through the process. That's where we're at. So, Eric, I think, as I heard your discussion towards the tail end of your presentation, that it's only human nature that as the process goes, as long as this process is gone, we're going to have people be thinking of <coughs> alternatives to the direction that the selectmen asked the Municipal Building Committee to take. And I think that's just a natural process. It's going to be part of what we have to do. It will be vetted. And I'll ask my board tonight, dead out. Does anyone have, Alan, I can't ask, do you happen to have anywhere, Damon, do we have a paragraph at all of what the charge for the Municipal Building Committee was that it's, day? It's actually right in your packet. Is it really? You, you it's in the it minutes. It yeah, awesome. Can, can you grab that and I'll talk for one sec? And I'll read it again. Do you want me to take a vote one more time of this board to see if that charter has changed in any way? Uh, you can certainly do that and that would be helpful. Uh, the essence of what Newbury is about and what has transpired since 2004 when this was initially brought up, the police station was initially brought up as the top priority in the master plan as the top priority facility in town um, is its own, I don't know, it's, it's its own project in a way that can't quite be compared to even neighboring towns. I mean, Salisbury had um, a process where they needed a police station. They had property that was town property. They, they 
vetted it. They they selected the OPM. They then selected the designer, and then they moved forward with the process. We've there's been a lot of momentum just getting to sites and comparative issues and what the facilities' needs were, and actually convincing people that we had needs to get to this point. So, in a way, the municipal building committee has done a lot more work than in discussing this with some other people and some other towns in terms of how they went about the process than, you know, than what we've done. And I mean, speaking honestly, it's because <clears throat> our nature is inclusive, you're not afraid, and you've been able to take and handle that. Some other people wouldn't have been so open, so you've done a great job. Now. I'm going to read what the charge was. I, as chair, would like to have a motion and a second and have discussion. Because I think what Eric is asking for, there's a tremendous amount of work that is coming very quickly. And I think we need to reaffirm that we made a mission, we made a charter, and we're either going to not stick to basically what we stated Oh, we're going to reaffirm for Eric once and for all in front of television that we will or will not stick to what we, here's what we said. Updated in the Board of Progress of the charge that the Board of Selectmen <coughs> had given to the Municipal Building Committee, and by the way, thank you, Ellen, comparing the original plan for the public safety facility complex would have included town reservations and a public safety police and fire complex to the plan for a combined town hall and police station and a plan for a combined town hall police station with a future ability to address the needs of the fire department so i see it i rethink quickly those three different things i don't think that's changed can i have a motion to reaffirm those for eric as he goes forward on his journey with the <clears throat> municipal building committee so moved do second. i have a second we call it an epic journey. <laughs> it certainly is epic. <laughs> is there any discussion? <coughs> I think that's what we need to put before the people. I think they need to have that comparison, and so I think it's, I think it's the right charge. It's inclusive. And I think he's it's inclusive. Doing a good job with it. Eric, would it be helpful if before every meeting, before you start, you can read the charge so that people in the building understand? Well, we've had the same attendees, and I have to say that the Municipal Building Committee, after speaking up and asking for residents, the residents that do show up are the same residents. It's not like we have a different group of residents that show up each time. And so people are committed to showing up and listening and providing input. So, um, and I think the, in reconfirming that and everything that you're asking for, the, the effort to overhaul the recommend the feasibility study recreate the recommendation and go through the OPM process is too much work I can't do it I, I just it's it's too much to to try to do all the steps and get it I think get it right um, and I don't want to rush to I want to I think we need to hire the right person because with the right person then everybody will will have an understanding and we'll have so much more value brought in by that company or firm as opposed to just finding somebody or anybody that mm -hmm. that has kind of sort of done this. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the right person that has the right experience. We're looking for the right people that understand Newberry and can talk our talk and not over our heads or below us in terms of helping guide us because they will guide us through the whole process. And the other piece is this is just a feasibility study. This is just a conceptual design. The real heavy lifting of design and crunching and thinking of this hasn't started yet because we haven't hired those people so we need to get started and after tonight because I'm going to ask for a vote after tonight this is what you can show the people that you're going to put forth to help you because we'll reaffirm once again this initial charge Amen. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. right and so. the feasibility study if, if with a fair amount of work will that out those it'll flush everything out options. Right. Eric, is there anything you need from us? No, I think the, the need this confirmation of where the road is going and the understanding of what the Missile Building, Missile Building Committee is trying to do and the effort that we're going to bring something to you and there's some work from 
giving you the recommendation, which will be a draft and an understanding, and then we'll make that the official. And then it needs all the help it can get by everybody and anybody in town in order to just get everybody to understand it. You know, mm -hmm. we've, we've made those comments about the uneducated voter and they get mad, but it's really a 50-50, anybody that's listening in TV, 50-50 effort on our part to get the information out and every resident in town's effort to come forward and find the information. There is no advocate arm I mean, you're the advocates for issues in town. You're the voice of, of bringing it to the people, and there's five of you. If people don't, you can't approach everybody. You're here, we're on TV, but you know we've put stuff on the website and people haven't signed it. There's been a lot of stuff on YouTube, and it seems that a lot of people have looked at it and said there's almost too much of some of that stuff on YouTube. So I think we're making progress, but it is, truthfully, you just can't expect people to show up at annual town meeting and hear a warrant description and then vote yay or nay. It, there's a lot, a lot to this project. And a lot of that information, when people understand it, of how he's got crossed and the I's got dotted in terms of how we're trying to provide value and how we made decisions. Um, and you're right, there'll never be a great, perfect decision for everyone, but there's a best decision with sound reasoning and values that we've gone through in a process in order to make those decisions. That's what we want to be able to get out to the people and, share. and I think this town has to realize Eric that you know there could be a, <clears throat> a little bit of an undercurrent that we're not listening or you know but in many many other towns and many many other communities when projects like this get put forth they take three and four and five and six times so you know we're hopefully yeah. <laughs> sure. we're hopefully moving uh, quick we're hopefully move <laughs> moving forward for Town meeting will be in the will be before the vote and hopefully we're successful. So are you confident that you can get what you need to get done for the annual town meeting? Uh yes. But it's it's gonna be a push and there's a lot of work to get things organized, get the information and then reorganize it in a way that then can be that everybody can disseminate it in their own way to other people in town. As I said, hopefully my famous words that I wasn't here just to produce another report that hits the table and everybody files, that I understand that even producing a thick report with all the great information isn't anything that anybody else really wants to read. It needs to be concise, the points need to be made, and they need to be clear so that you can simply present exactly you know, what the issues are. And then there's backup in the report if people want to dig into it. So the between this and your job, which is the highest level, how much golf did you play this summer? <laughs> Two rounds in the spring, and then it went from there. <laughs> so at least for me, and I think the rest of the board, thanks once again. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Right. Thanks, Eric. <coughs> have a good holiday. <laughs> yes, have a good holiday. Um, yes. Real quick, because we're moving okay. forward. Eric? Eric? Jim, can you go let up him, to the let mic? Him go. Let him go for now. We'll see if we can get him back, Jim. Um, Donnie Jarvis, appointment to the meeting of committee. <laughs> he just he ran stepped away. stepped out of the room. So, Doug Packer, how do you like that? You must be important. <laughs> Will you explain the location? Because there's some folks that really won't understand where this is. I know you would have anyway. Yes. Okay. The Sinecos family owns, owns two lots on Annapolis Way, one on the east side and one on the west side. Uh, they prior to all the erosion uh, in, on Annapolis, in front of Annapolis, they attempted to permit a house on the second lot. Does everyone know where Annapolis Way is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right on the water? Annapolis yes. East. Uh, the Department of Environmental Protection intervened and said, no, you can't build a house there. So the lot set vacant. Um, some months later, we had accelerated erosion down at Plum Island. Their house was compromised. Uh, they needed help to quickly get it up on, uh, on uh, bunks and, and secure yep. it. Yep. And so we issued an emergency certification in working with the Department of uh, Environmental Protection Northeast Region. Uh, one thing that the department didn't want is they didn't want them to move it across the street where they've already given them a no for that lot and then subsequently put a house in the lot that they've vacated. Uh, so they had a conservation, they insisted that a conservation restriction be filed 
along with the um, emergency certification. So that's what you have before you there. Um, I've read it, familiar with it. The uh, Conservation Commission unanimously voted to approve it the other night. It's pretty much boilerplate. Uh, there were a couple different little things that got into it. They do have the ability to defend that lot to a certain extent, which is very valuable down there. Uh, if they have an unequal defense, um, if the people on either side of them have an unequal defense, we're in for some trouble down there. The other thing that they're allowed to do is some limited parking. So there will be a fence about 10 feet off the street, and they'll be able to park uh, within that 10-foot zone. It's nice that it's called defense now. <laughs> yeah, can you explain that? <laughs> what? Defense. Um, there is a lot of material on that beach down there <laughs> that is right now holding that dune in place. Um, that was an effort that was done by the homeowners and was not engineered. It is likely uh, it will fail at some point. Mm -hmm. And it might fail catastrophically and it might fail slowly. Um, either way, there's going to have to be some sort of response down there. Um, so in order to protect the neighborhood, you can't have an unequal response on the coastline. So if you have a rock wall with a hole in it, um, which was the fate of this lot when, it, when this lot, yep. for, when this first happened and they moved across the street, um, there was no protection in front of this lot. In about two nights, it looked like you took a 50-foot melon baller and just took this lot right out. Um, so you do need the ability to defend these lots down there at this point. They've always said that if you have a defended structure on the very beach, if there's any place that's left undefended, all the energy seems to go to that place. Yeah. Any road? Yes. And the other thing is, I mean, for the board that's sitting here, I don't know about Damon, but Chuck and I are probably the only ones that remember, you know, the really bad storms on the island. And you really have to remember that if Annapolis Way were to be breached or any way further down, especially Annapolis Way because it's high and everything below it is low. What do you think is obviously underground? <coughs> it's all the water and sewer infrastructure, and it's broken off into almost a couple hundred houses, right? Well, yeah. the Annapolis Way, <coughs> excuse me, Annapolis Way's been isolated. No, but I'm um, talking once it gets through oh, and yeah. down. Well, well that, that's the only street on Plum Island right now that we can isolate right. because of the issue down there, the city of Newburyport, put valves on either end. Divider area. box, yeah. But if that even overwashes, and when you stand on Southern, Southern Boulevard, you look up into that Right neighborhood. over the houses. If that neighborhood overwashes and you bury all those candy down there, um, they will end up having to shut that whole line down. Now that um, that vacuum system works on on a quarter of four, four parts. You'll shut down <coughs> 250 to 300 people if you overwash that area because that system will not be able to be used, and it sure. could be months. So it'd be catastrophic. And they have the ability to do that. A limited ability to do that to to respond in the manner that their neighbors <coughs> respond. So. And I'd also like to introduce, uh, we have Chip Nyland here tonight, and he is Hi, representing to, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tosinikos. All right, do you need right. anything from us other than a motion, and we can have some more discussion within the motion process? Unless you have other questions, uh, no, I don't need anything from you. We can need an authorization for signature. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, motion I know, to sign. The motion, the motion to sign. Can I have a motion for authorization to sign the conservation? Uh, is it restriction or an easement? Restriction. restriction. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, um, go ahead. The only question I had, having done some of the beach restoration and capture, uh, it looked like when I was reading through the restriction, it was very specific about the size of the lot. And I don't know how, if sand is built up on the dunes, the dune grows in that area, if that would change the restriction in any way or their property, or if their property is always subject to that size. I don't know how beachfront property and erosion and it's not matriculation, but growth of the beach affects those lots. Yeah. Your erosion does not affect the square footage of the lot. You <clears throat> may end up with uh, a less volume in your on your on your yard. Mm -hmm. uh, you may end up with land underwater. underwater. A portion of your land could be land underwater, but the square footage remains the same no matter what happens. Okay. There. Was there a row of houses ever in front of Annapolis Way, or was it further down? I know there was a row of houses north of the center. I don't yeah, yeah. know if there was anything. So, so north of the center, there was another row of houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My guess is that no, because I think being a low water state, those people down there own to, well, yeah. they, they yeah. own to a point certain yeah. that they have rights That's to right. low water. I don't think there was ever any property owners in front of them. Okay. There was one other minor issue with this, I understand. 
parking? Uh, yeah, the, the parking, when the, uh, when the original uh, restriction came in, the parking was limited to five to seven feet. Uh, and the board discussed that. Actually, I, I gotta digress a little bit. When it first came in, it was just open. It was parking will be allowed on the lot. I, I needed that defined a little bit. So I, I, we worked with Mr. Nyland and got some limitations on the parking and we settled with 10 feet off the street will be the limit of parking on this lot. And about how many cars will that allow? Well, they're probably 70 feet long. Uh, probably four or five. Yeah, okay. at the most. The parking, the 29, excuse me, at, at Chip Nyland on behalf of the Simicuses. Parking, when they were at 29, when they were at 29, they would park on 30 because that was vacant. So, you know, the way parking is down in that area. So <laughs> now we're going to, since we're going to be living in 30, we're going to park on 29, but on, only on the outer edge. And there's also language in there that says we can't destroy any dunes mm -hmm. as well. So that's, that's what the rule is. Is, All right, we've had is, a first and a second. Any other is, discussion? Is the parking, is it head-on parking or is it parallel? Is it it's going to be parallel because we get 10 feet, you're not going to be able to, you know, you might have, you might have smart a car, little man. bit of an angle, but it's yeah. pretty much going to be just. I didn't think a smart car. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We have a f uh, first and second. Uh, any discussion further? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Don. All right. Thank you. Donnie can wait, I guess. And Jim, you'll have to. <laughs> Um, one day liquor license, Spence Little Farm, Little Lane, for Old Newby Day, for Saturday, January 9th, 2016, 5 to 9 p.m., with a rain date of Saturday, January 16th, 2016. Avery, will you go get Donnie Jarvis yeah. and, ask, and ask Eric if he can come back in, too, please? Uh, Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? second? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 These are new business license applications. And we're gonna start the process where I will read just the new, and then I will announce the renewals. If there is a hold on any of these, holla. Um, Elizabeth Woodworth, Lizzie Soap Company, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Woodworth, doing business as Painted Pony Barnes. Um, Bernadette Goslin, is that pronounced right, Gozen? Yep. Um, Pilates in Newbury and Port. Christine Roop, Harmony National Learning Center. That's the um, school, right? Mm -hmm. I thought Good. they already had one. Well, I think that's resigning it that we need to resign. Okay. Um, no holes, seeing and hearing no's. Do I have a motion to accept? Motion to approve all? Do Second. I? Yeah. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Donnie. Thank yes, you. Sir. Come on up. You have an appointment. We figured you were going to get out of here and run. Uh, Donnie Jarvis, appointment of the media committee. Explain real quickly why you want to be on the media committee, Donnie. Well, um, Caleb and I are good friends. We've talked a lot about ways Is that to that true, improve. Caleb? <laughs> 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 uh, we spoke a lot on the ways to improve the channel, not just for um, different things, like, like different content, but like how to reach the audience and things that they may be interested in. For example, last two weeks ago, Caleb and I visited Oak Ridge and Quaker Hill to see what they're interested in um, seeing on the channel, ways we can improve the channel, and um, things they, like different announcements they may want to see or events. Um, and I'm pretty big on communication. That's why. So Caleb and I talked about it. I felt that I'd be a good asset to the committee. Good. So I emailed to join. Good. Can All I right. speak to that, Jeff, please? Let's make the motions first so we move it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Um, I sit on the media committee as well, and we were looking for actually two residents um, to seek, uh, and I strongly support Donnie because I think he will um, help us reach out to the community. Um, I would like to have another resident, if it's at all possible, anyone out there in TV land. If you're interested in please helping us, we would like to have one more seat filled. Um, we meet monthly for an hour. It's not a lot of work. Um, and we could use any help we get. Thank you. And I think we ought to nick you the feet that never stop moving. So, um, so we have a motion, we have the discussion. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Jim, 
if you have a question for Eric, then it can be facilitated quickly if you go to the. The question, Eric, is uh, are you going to comment to the board on that package that I talked about last Thursday? Let's put it on the agenda for the next meeting. All right, are you, if Eric so deems it out of the municipal building committee. The, the reason I brought it up, I was asked specifically to bring it to Eric's attention, so I wanted yep. some feedback from Eric tonight. What, where he stands on that. Could we have just a, a word on? But we might not be able to digest the I whole process. Yep. That, but but, can't, that, but like can't, that, can't, can't that go through the municipal building committee? Go ahead, real quick. So, Jim, Jim, your idea is a master plan for Morgan Ave. And the master plan that you're precluding to get to a similar project budget would be renovations at Town Hall, renovations at the fire station, and building a standalone police station. So I think the Municipal Building Committee's stance is that, as I had stated earlier, that the value that we're, we're, we want to bring forward, that there's great value in a combined facility, first off. And building three separate facilities isn't won't provide that value and will be a lot more money in the long run. So as part of the, the charge and um, the discussions early on about hearing, the, leaving out the fire station, <coughs> we have asked CSS architects to include <coughs> outlines and a thought of, an ex of a, the existing building being there, whether it's renovated or not, and a new fire station on the far lot in an, in an essence to try to figure out how the project here, which we were charged to look at, might work or there might be synergy across the property for parking if those two options might happen in the future. We will ask for some general pricing, but we won't have as detailed a program or conceptual plans in which to get that pricing. So I think, Jim, the, the, the answer to your question is is no, a, a renovation of this building, a renovation of that building, and just the inclusion of the fire company at this point in time is a non-starter from what we've heard from the people. Well, more so, Eric, because, I, it, it, you know, our charge is to stay the course that you have right now in front of you. Yes, and, think, and so <laughs> we're, we're doing that, and I've heard you. You've provided some information. I've taken time and I've provided you additional information back as, as you've asked for, but it's not, um, it's not the main charge of the committee, but I know that we need to reach out and figure out what a renovation cost might be for this building and then, and then put the value on that. That if you're going to spend a million dollars here and the building's going to last five years and you're going to lose out on the synergy that's somehow what I need to report back to you so that we have comparison information yep. to understand what is the best project moving forward. Thank you, Rick. That? Jim, we're going to let that hold right now because we're going to move forward. Right? That really needs to That's, go through the Municipal you, Building yeah. Committee. She's, <clears throat> when that goes through the Municipal Building Committee and comes out of the Municipal building committee I'm pretty intent right now on staying charge that we have in front of us and that really doesn't I mean to be honest Mr. with you Chairman, I understand that we you don't know, even know we yeah well we've been asked for three months at the committee is there anything different than what's been charged to bring it to the board of selectors yep now that's what I moved ahead with it immediately back to Eric. So it was important to me that Eric take his position, which is fine. But I think this should be for the agenda for the next meeting. I'd like to get into some details. Of we do, this is what I asked a week ago when I brought the proposal. Right. So, Jim, I think the, the charge of what's been brought forward to date to the Board of Selectmen has been <coughs> reviewed. It's been given back to the Missile Building Committee and your <coughs> You know, you are attending. We are listening to you. It's not our charge and the intent in terms of providing a comparison. Eric, I, I understand clearly the position. To me, it's, it's no longer with you. I'm asking the board to be on the agenda for this specific subject. But the board isn't going to debate the fundamentals of site. Eric, and I, I would leave that answer to what that I'll answer for you, really. I'll, I'll answer for you, Jim. We, how long's the packet? It's a two-page letter. All right. I would ask to have a copy for each selectman. Each selectman will look at it. 
what we do after that will decide when we look at the packet. Let us look at the packet by ourselves. All right? All right, thank you. What, I need to understand clearly. What does it take to get an item on the agenda on the board? You, you, as a citizen, can put an, you as a citizen can put an item on the agenda. I'm not blocking you putting it on the agenda. I am not right now prepared to listen to every citizen in the town of Newbury that wants to I build the police station that. here, wants to do this. I'm I not just prepared. I have to know that in two weeks it will be on the agenda. If you ask to have it put on the agenda, I you can put it on the agenda. I for that to happen. I have to know tonight, is it going to be on the agenda for two weeks? Jim, to what end? I was just going to say. Go May ahead. I? Yep. To what end? To the end that's in the details of what I propose. Okay, what you're trying to do is scuttle Eric's ship because you don't think he's aiming in the right direction. And I'm sorry, sir, we seem to think Eric's going in the right direction. I understand that. I understand the board's direction. And, and Eric's following it. And I'm trying to support him the best I can. But I'm not saying that what I said before is there may be other better options that are out there. And if the board wants to close their ears, then you can stop it now. If you're willing to listen, which I asked you to do two or three weeks ago, you said you would, and you're telling me tonight maybe you're not, I'm giving two different stories. I, I, the, the issue, Jim, is if you're gonna include the fire station, uh, as much as I wanna solve that problem over there, it's a non-starter from what I understood from the vote yes. and the people's discussions here. Exactly. That they're a private company and people just don't understand what they're actually and how they're functioning and they don't understand the full engagement of how the town funds them and what they fund and how they fund it and there's <coughs> been a huge history since they were developed and a huge membership and a lot of people were past members you know when the past fire chief's wife speaks up and doesn't understand what has transpired in the past five years when her husband's been the fire chief for the past 17 years it just shows the amount of confusion of understanding what's going on i don't know exactly the full understanding of what's being developed i've i've learned a lot but as a municipal building committee that's not my charge to understand the fire department and the engagement of the town with the fire department and try to solve that issue as i'm trying to solve a facility issue so the board has spoken up and said, and I believe the people have spoken up and said, yes. the fire company, is. It, we're not going to support it if it's in any way, shape, or form. It's too bad, it's not kind of rational, but that's what's been said. <coughs> and I think that was what was clear. So we're on to solving police and, and um, town hall issues. And that was the reason that was even clear from the fire company of why they couldn't negotiate and figure out what they wanted to do and why the public safety complex, which was in place and in motion long before I started from the charge of the previous boards of selectmen, um, that's how we got where we are today. So. Eric, I have no issue with you. Okay. Well, what I'm trying to do is direct to, to the board, and I'm just making a simple request to get on the agenda. And, and also, on the second page of the letter, it goes to one point, and it all has to do with the property over there. And we also understand from previous meetings that there has been ongoing negotiations. I also understand that, that at times there's been an executive session, and I don't know if we know anything further today than we did yesterday. I don't know if I remember executive session on having to do with... It, the negotiations aren't conducted in executive no, session. It doesn't the make negotiations sense. Now, do me a favor. Over there. I'm not going to stop a citizen for asking you to put something on the agenda. And this is by no means to be curt, but I am definitely going to register a time frame as we discuss something that should have been vetted at the municipal building committee level. So this is your one shot to do this, make very good. I don't want to veer from Jim, what we are doing now. This was vetted last Thursday with Eric at the 7 a.m. meeting. The proposal was given to him. He, he looked at it briefly and said, I just don't think I have time to get into it. So Tracy's direction to me was to bring it to Eric. I did, and that's why I wanted Jim, Eric. Jim, so did you, so listen, I don't, I don't, board. I have no more time. Okay. I'm going to finish this. You may, as a citizen, put something on the agenda. Am I right or wrong? Yes, absolutely. So the question so is, put it, 
agenda. We'll deal with it in two weeks. And Jim, I think the question. But let me let me finish. The, the no, issue. go ahead. What are we going to say? Here? I've asked a week ago for it to be put on the agenda. Now, do we have to ask a second time? Yeah. Make sure you ask for the agenda of that week that you're going to ask. And Just before go, go to Wednesday. And ask. So and 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 it'll be fine. Thanks for. Thank you. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Eric, we're okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, we are on to renewals. Did you have your hand up? Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, here we go. Richard Salmons and Bridge Row Signs. Oh, obviously, as we do before, under these renewals, if there's one you'd like to hold, and there's one that I'm not going to vote on. Um, <coughs> Brandon Kelly, um, South Storage, Nasa Abu Id, BBA AL Energy Consultant, Anthony Barbaras, AM Motors, Vivian Anastasia, is that right, guys? Anastasia yep. Flowers, yes, mm -hmm. Wayne Altavilla, PGS Variety, Sheila Bassoon, the Bassoon A, um. Doing business from the barn at 286 High Road. Uh, fit by John. Doing business as, wow, how's that, Alan? The MSO? You got Kala Kapalupo there, yeah, too. Uh, and Kala Kapalupo, 26 per mile parking lot. I got myself out of that one. Newbie Auto Sales, Hank Moore, treasurer of Old Newbie Golf Course. Sharon Pearson, Pearson's Hardware, Mark Ferry, per mile and grill. Greg Pugh, per mile and uh, beachcomber. Yeah. Linda Gamage, Sadie's for hair. James Walpone, Walpone uh, Towing. Uh, Walton is Walton's Auto Body. William Pierce is uh, Wiley B Classics. John B. Salt is Special Interests of Autos of Newbyport. David and John Moulton doing business as Marine, Riverfront Marine Sports. John G. Simmon, Siemens is Lee Siemens is Sculpture. Um, <coughs> Lee Supporter doing as Seacoast Huss and Pet Sitting. Kendall Bowie as Mad Martha's Cafe. Josette Walker doing business as Ads and Looms. Edward Supreme as Supreme's Driving School. Angelo, holy mackerel, lucky. How do I pronounce that? Geo what? Chinopolis. Chinopolis. President of the Pizza Fabry doing business as Pomal and Provisions. William and Louise Robital as doing business as Pheasant Way Meadow Farms. Koski doing business as Bill's Auto Repair. Richard C. Owens. <coughs> Um, and Jennifer Owens as General Business Auto Repair, Paul Colombo, uh, Pike River Grill, Jay Nauto is uh, Jay Nauto. So, um, do I have a motion? Motion to approve all, Mr. Chairman. Second. Um, None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we need a vote in the form of a motion to authorize our fire departments, as I understand it, to seek or not as much to seek, but to give mutual aid for towns that are to our neighbors. Am I saying that right, Ellen? Is that reads? To I can consent. actually, I can actually, yep. Uh, cities and towns may by ordinance of law, by vote of the Board of Selectmen, the Selectmen uh, Committee or Board exercising similar powers, authorize their respective fire departments to go and aid another city, town, or district, or area under federal jurisdiction in this commonwealth or in any other adjoining state in extinguishing fires thereof or rendering any other emergency or performing any deal to audit by the head of the fire department. So it's just to make sure that our fire departments have a <coughs> approval to um, participate in municipal aid, which is a long was, held practice. My question is, what has changed? This has been since I have been a firefighter. It's something that has to be done every year, from what I understand. So. Well, that's new to me. And, huh. I mean, I'm more than willing to do it. It's just that we have never... I think... Huh. I think we're probably... <coughs> Excuse me. I hmm. think there's a lot of changes that have happened in the fire department. Yeah. So, okay. know, it seems to be that... Um, Excuse me. <coughs> Dang it. Motion to approve. Yep. Second. Um, any you. other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, as I understand the next, which would be under old business, it's a liquor license, revised acceptance and change of offices. When we first accepted old Newbury's liquor licenses, the um, 
board sent it back. Uh, we have. Well, it wasn't the acceptance of their liquor license. It was their change of their officers and directors. Well, they, they weren't recorded, right? They weren't recorded with the Secretary of State. Yep. And the ABC seemed the same way. Yeah, because if I read this, I so respectively. This is the third try. This yeah. is the house Why cleaning. Why does it keep coming back? <laughs> the charm. Why yeah. does it keep coming back? Because. Here's what it, here's what it says exactly. Their application correctly. Yeah. Here's what it says, and it doesn't surprise. It's just the way things go. Um, and they change all the time at the golf course. So the application respectfully recommend the application be returned and no action taken due to the following reasons. This application is for the change of managers records of the ABC and offices indicates the official directors have not been updated with the LLB or the ABCC. Therefore, this application should be for new officers directed as well as a updated DOI certificate of good standing and must be included as well as the application form for information form of each member, petition, transfer of ownership, transfer of stock, new officers directed from any other and any other actions taken. So <coughs> it's just what usually gets done, I guess, and Old Newby was a little behind the eight ball and getting it going, but is it all up to date now? Well, this is their application and they have been working with the ABCC. It's not my place to yep. work with them on this because... Are they ready for us to vote on this and, and have it come back again? But if it doesn't and it goes hope, through, we're okay. I hope it won't come back again. Yes. Oh, sorry. All right. We so can, uh, motion to sign the license. Is there a second? Second. And I guess we got enough and it's... No, it's the motion to... Um, accept the change of officers and okay. directors. Okay, sorry, motion to accept the revised or just accept the, the change of officers? Change. Motion to accept the change of officers and directors of the Old Newbury Golf Club, Inc. Second. Aye. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hopefully they get it right and they don't lose their liquor license. Yeah. Um, did we pass over this yeah, in we, red? the one in my other thing. What is it? Get rid of it. Um, Chuck, did you have any discussion? We just passed Old Newbury Golf Course, but it was just a change of offices hadn't been recorded. The third time. It's it. <laughs> wow. Uh, vote to initiate the process of replacing. So, a, one more vote on that. Oh. And then there's a oh. form that you have to sign as the local licensing authority. It's Form 43. So you have to vote to sign. Okay, that. motion to sign Form LA 43. LLA 3. Second. Is there, no, make a motion for us. A I motion, did. Your motion, did. second. Uh, yeah. Discussion, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Aye, okay. thank you so, so much. that was what I was supposed to sign. Thanks. Sorry. That was. Jump the gun. <laughs> right the Crystal bottom. clear. I like mud. Uh, vote to initiate the process of replacing the Board of Registrar member as MGL, Mass General Law, C51, uh, dash 15 by signing the letters prepared to the chairs of the Democratic Town and the Republican Town Committee. Someone stepped down from the Board of Registrars and we have three letters that we have to sign, two. And I asked Leslie to kind of tell me what, unless you guys are all smarter than me, what the Board of Registrars do. And this is what they do. Maybe not quite as much in this town, we don't know, but it's kind of, this is a quick sketch of some of what they do or can do. They hold voter registration sessions as required. They affirm and register qualified residents. They prepare annual street list census. They prepare voters list for elections and town meetings. They certify signatures on nomination papers and petitions. They certify signatures on absentee ballots and requests. They facilitate absentee voting to qualified voters in healthcare facilities. They preside over recounts. And I think in a lot of other towns and maybe larger uh, towns, that's actually a, a pretty heavily paid position. I don't know. I think probably Leslie does a lot of that now. So, like everyone Aside does, recounts, everyone does huge. in this town. Aside yeah. all the recounts, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. So. All right. So, do we need <coughs> a motion to send those letters? to the Democratic and Republican and Committee. Motion to sign the letter. <coughs> so we're going to sign those letters before they're sent. Motion to sign those. Um, second. Is there a second? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Aye. Once again, uh, as I understand the next one, um, this is for Lucky. 
again uh, at Palm Island Provisions, and he's just going to try the mass lottery uh, Kino, I think, has several different ways of doing it. Um, Lucky wants to participate um, in uh, in Massachusetts State Lottery is offering existing and non-pouring agents our Kino to go at, um, to go game a transaction which is identical to the already existing online games such as Measure Buck Mass Cash. At this time, Lottery is not providing agents with Kino Monitor as part of this program. And what it's asking us to do, if we have anything that we object to, these agents selling Kino to go, you must do so in writing within 21 days of receipt of this letter. So if we have any objections, we have to ask Ellen to draft a letter. Do we need a motion, Ellen? No, I don't believe we do. Yeah. So, so I mean, does anyone have any objections? To, so I don't think we're we we won't write a letter in 21 days. Um, yeah, I know that's coming. Okay, you sort of skipped over it, so I was no, worried you I were planning to jump on by. I'm going to leave that to the very end. Okay. All right. I guess we're as close to the end as possible. Um, Unless you want to review meeting minutes first. <laughs> you want them. <laughs> No. All right. Let's do. We're going to um, vote to sign the appointment slip for the Milan Study Committee. Is everyone aware of how the process worked and who was chosen? But yep. in your packet, you will see the first person that was chosen was C. Peter Erickson. The, no, uh, no here, here's the list of how it was chosen. Okay. You mean? Top vote getter. Ranked. ranked. Mm -hmm. Top vote getter was Robert Carrier, Pat Keating, Jen Wright, C. Peter Erickson, and Bob Connors. So those are the five. And the committee also includes Jeff Walker, Tracy Blaze, Martha Taylor, and Deputy of Police John Lucy. So we have to make a motion to sign the appointment letters as they stand. So can I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? Um, can we, yeah. You go, Damon, first. You'd mentioned uh, you might want two uh, selectman representatives there. Have you changed your mind about that or just I'm wanted to I'm, leave it open? I'm totally flexible but open to discussion. Um, okay. We've left our, by natural attrition of intellectualizing this over and over, we've left the committee also to include Jeff Walker, Tracy Blaze, Martha Taylor as, correct me if I'm wrong, Tracy or Ellen, as non-voting members. I'm a non-voting member. I'm I'm, I mean, is, I don't think Martha, is Martha and John Lucy and myself going to be non-voting members as we perceive this? Probably not. Um, usually. I serve as ex officio on most of the boards and committees, and I'm a non-voting member, but if you want to deem yourselves non-voting, you um, certainly can. If we saw that or did that, um, we could also have maybe by the choice of the board another selectman, although then we're going to be intimidating people. I was just going to say that. But we could have another selectman as a voting member. And I could be ex officio because I know a lot of the history. Is there another committee, I mean, another board that would have a member that would want to go on that also? Um, anything from CONCOM to plan? Well, I mean, to, I mean, plan is already there with Martha, I'm sorry. But, uh, no. I think, I think people could <coughs> sit in on this. And there's going to be a public hearing that's intrinsic within this whole process. And we can have some discussion right now, everyone. I don't care if I'm a voting member. I don't care if there's another selectman that happens to go on uh, with those five that are a voting member. It just hit me when I was talking like this. I don't care if I move up to a voting member. Um, I just didn't want to basically have feedback from that group saying that they were overpowered by the selectman. Mm -hmm. Well. The meetings are all going to be held in public, so we can go anyways. Um, and they'll 
they'll well, have to. Two could go. No, as long as you don't. I think if it's a public meeting, we can go. I mean, I we can have five people at a school committee meeting. Right. So, uh, the, the stick is as long as it's a posted. Yeah, we're just meeting. not deliberating. Yeah. As long as we don't talk, we just listen. Um, but we had 17 residents apply for this position, and I think that's huge. And I think that that every single one of them did it because they care about the town of Newbury and they care about where they, they live. And I really think that the board should thank each and every one of them by email. <laughs> can, we, can we do that? Can we email them all and thank them and let them know that, you know, even though they weren't chosen to sit on this committee, they are still more than welcome um, I motion that we send a letter to the residents of Plum Island I, that, applied. that applied for this Plum Island thanking study them committee, for their thanking them for their interest yep. and um, encouraging them to stay within the process and be part of the solution for the town of Newbury. Second motion. Any other discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 I think this <laughs> should be a process a good idea. that exhibits democracy and, uh, it, you know, certainly, hopefully, <coughs> provides some information we don't have because that's what the idea of doing it this way is. If it turns out to be that the same whole process is just beat up all over again, it has been a failure, so I do charge these people to try to come up with a different way of looking at things and, and, and produce a good product. I have some ideas on that. I, I think that um, <clears throat> one of the things that we can ask this committee when they first, or actually when, when they come in, are they going to come in here and meet us at all? I mean, how does this go? You want to charge them? Where it, our charge was relatively specific mm -hmm. when we did it. I mean, if we render the charge too expansive, we'll be dealing with erosion on Plum Island, the jetty. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, but that's not I my mean, point. My point is it's very specific. It was to deal with parking, littering. Right. right. Um, what else? Lifeguards, maybe, alternative sources of revenue. And I think but there was even I, street lights in there, which probably lights. was by a mistake. But I mean, <laughs> I think keeping basically to that charge is probably <coughs> a direction to go in. I agree. But what I'd like to say, ask this committee specifically is that when they deliberate or when they decide how they're going to come up with solutions, that I would like them to determine what, how they see them successful. What is their definition of a successful committee? And we need something to come with us. I mean, what is their definition of a successful solution Outcomes. to what they're talking exactly. about? Exactly. Yeah. I think that will help them with their charge because it's a very short period. It's only three months that they, that they, they have. They, the, the best direction we can give them, the uh -huh. most direct direction we can give them, the better they'll be able to come up with something so we can put it, if we need to put it on, on the warrant, we can. So I think that I think that it's they they're only going to be meeting until the 31st. I think if if we empower them to come up with their own definition of a, a successful committee and what they would like to accomplish down there within the means of what we've charged them, I think that can only help them. Well, I think in some respects what you said if you draw back into the charge and the things they're supposed to be talking about is you're asking them to provide solutions to the issues. Recommendations. That, and those solutions are, for lack of a better word, recommendations uh, to help us in our plight to move forward. Correct. That's what committees like this are supposedly supposed to do. Correct. If they do not accomplish it, like I said in a, in a little earlier, it will be a committee that did not accomplish its, you know, its task. And that may happen too. It does. It does in certain committees.
but I think the I think the best direct the the most best direction we can give them. Um, I think that they need to determine what they want is what they define as success is down down there. What if you can see the end, you know where you're going. It's easier to find the path to get there. Is my point. If you don't know where you're going, then you're just running around in circles and you're never getting anywhere. Well. There's some pretty bright people on this, so say, there are. I should there's think two you. on there that have been on a lot of boards and committees. If and they if we have to lead these people by the hand, I'll be disappointed. No, I don't think I'm not saying lead them by the hand. Surprised. Yeah, I think I think we're going to be fine. Let's yeah. let's hope. Let's let's just hope. So, all those in favor? Um, aye. Any more discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? To sign. Aye. To, Aye. Aye. Okay. So do you think this well, this committee will be meeting morning. at night oh, during yeah. the day, or what's the plan with that? We did that, okay. I'm Review sorry. of the minutes, uh, December 8th, 2015. Yeah. Motion to approve as read. Um, Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Warrants, Ellen? Yes. Uh, motion to sign warrants. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting updates? Hearing none. Moving forward. Any executive session? Seeing none. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Um, Chairman. Yeah. He skipped over the report. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's it funny. It said no on your thing. Yeah. So I thought yeah. she told you she didn't have Free. one. Well, I didn't know if you, you know what it is? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what? <laughs> we have hired a new Council on Aging um, director to, I would say, replace Marty Joe, but Marty can't be replaced, <laughs> to take over her duties and responsibilities. Her name is um, Margaret Nally. I think some of us have had an opportunity to meet her. I'd encourage you all to welcome her. She's um, she's going to be able to take over right where Marty left off, and the Council is very happy. Um, that she was ultimately chosen. She was working for Marty for oh, okay. um, a brief period of time. She's just recently come on board with us, but I think she'll definitely continue on in the same spirit that Marty Jo um, has conducted business there. Uh, we also um, kicked off our meeting yesterday with Municipal Resources, Inc., a gentleman by the name of Brian Duggan, who is going to be spending, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some time with us helping us with our transition, uh, our fire department transition. Part of the contract, they're going to be developing an organizational chart for the way that they would recommend um, a fire department uh, might look. Um, we currently operate under the special act of the legislature that um, uses a board of fire engineers as the management um, head of the department. And they're going to look at that and, and look at other models and, and make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen about, you know, what might be the most effective way to organize a fire department. They're also going to outline a process for implementation of any changes. They are going to um, look at qualifications, training, those, those types of things um, when we're selecting officers. Uh, ranking officers for a department. Tracy, what? are they are they are they moving to become a union? Uh, that's something I wouldn't be involved in. Okay, that's right. Um, yep. As management, if that that would be something that the the um, the firefighters themselves yep. um, mm -hmm. would drive. Um, we're going to look at recruitment and retention of our on call personnel. I've heard um, over the last couple of years that we have a hard time getting on call firefighters, so they may have some ideas that will help us in that respect. Um, creating job descriptions, re reviewing wage rates, making sure we're competitive and, and um, in respect to that. And then they're also going to conduct a brief review of our facilities and our apparatus. When they finish, um, a, a, another company called Emergency Vehicle Response is going to come in and they are going to conduct a very thorough evaluation of all of the apparatus that the town is currently leasing from the independent fire companies. Um, not only apparatus, but equipment as well. Uh, we want to ensure, obviously, in the event of any kind of emergency that those pieces of apparatus are going to 
function properly every time they roll. Um, and they're also going to help us put together an annual preventative maintenance program so that we have vehicle maintenance records and we know who's working on them and that they're certified and, um, you know, for, li for liability and those types of issues. So, um, in conjunction with some of what Eric was talking about earlier, I think this is really going to give us a lot of great information to help you guys um, in making decisions as we move the department forward. Amy uh, Sadkin, our library director, has notified the trustees that she is going to be moving on. She's accepted a position in Woodstock, Vermont wow. as the library director <laughs> there. Um, everyone's terribly disappointed. Again, she's done a marvelous job over there. So I'm going to be meeting with Dick Passeri, who I guess is the chairman of the library trustees, to kind of um, look at how we want to conduct the search for the new director. Um, <clears throat> and just a reminder that Christmas and New Year's Day holiday will be observed on um, 1224 and 1231. The offices will be closed on those days. And trailer update, we've got less than six months to find a location for our uh, personnel. Uh, we had issues this week. The rain just pours in in that um, trailer out front. Also, uh, Leslie Haley has notified me that after being kicked out of the fire hall and moved into the box, the storage container out here, they're going to be kicked out of the storage container because we've got to move um, the razor into that to store for the winter. So we have nowhere for all of the voting apparatus. So that's going to be stored in the hall here temporarily until we can find a location um, to put it. They're not. Wow. You know, we've run out of room, <laughs> and we do still have the struggles with the records over in the dump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so. Just a reminder, so, can so we, we all keep it front and center. Yep. So can what what's what's the town doing to find alternative locations for office space? Uh, we yeah, Ellen's everything. worked um, at putting together a list of some available space, looking at um, square footage and rates. But if we are going to move forward, just so you know, it's very time consuming because we have to go out to a competitive bid process to lease the office space. So. Again, six months is when everything shut down. Really, we need to be making some decisions very soon so we can have uh, an alternative in place um, for so which direction will, we're going to go. Will that be on the agenda for the for in January? A, a proposal to move? Yeah, what we're going to sure. do, where we're going to go. It's up to you. Um, under the lease agreement we have the, with the Grange, we can't store the voting equipment there, correct? I don't think so. We, we, I can certainly contact them and ask mm -hmm. if they have an, an area that they're not utilizing. We used to keep it under the stage. Yeah, that's what I was voting, thinking so. about. It, the byfield stuff may be there. I, I'm not sure where they store that. I wonder how sensitive that is to dust and everything else. I mean, well, they're about. Um, Leslie reported to me that they are about eight hundred and fifty dollars each mm -hmm. one of those squares. So I don't know. Well, I mean, we could wrap it. Wrap yeah. it up. There's, I know there's the space under the stage mm. that Chuck mentioned, and also provided the roof is good, there is the space up in the attic there where I used to store <coughs> a lot of light oh. equipment. Um, it's not necessarily easy to get stuff to and from, but we don't vote all that often, we'll luckily. That mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and we could shrink wrap them, and then they would be mm -hmm. tight. Yeah, bag them, shrink wrap them, something One like that. One of every space in the library is being utilized, probably, right? Well, I, we kind of have to, uh, who's, <coughs> and I, forgive me because I'm new, whose role is it? Is it the Board of Selectmen that makes the determination as to <coughs> where the town goes? So if we need to start making Active. some decisions, then we need to have a list, <coughs> bless you, mm -hmm. uh, we need to have a list of what, what needs to go and potential places for it to go, and we need to have a working meeting. Okay. And if we need to call the rest of the uh, department heads in, um, I really think that six months is going to be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. I think we have to have an all hands on, on deck, and I want to have a plan. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I want to do it now. It's Christmas, but not tonight. No. Want to stay here any longer? No. <laughs> yeah, How many should... cubby holes could you get in here? 
and we move to the library for our meetings. I mean, that might be a decision. We'll be we doing talked some, about it. Yeah, we'll be doing some additional um, air quality testing as well. I was just wondering um, and how, that the, will how help, the air is in here. That will help um, identify what options we have. <laughs> yeah, that's a... <laughs> When we, so the, uh, when we put the insulation in this roof, anytime you save the amount of heating oil we save in this building, you're certainly changing the way the uh, building conducts air. True. Uh -huh. yep. So kind of to dovetail on, on this issue, <coughs> where we're going to find space for all these boards, um, Jim Moran wants to have, he's going to put this, um, option on the agenda bless you on the agenda at our next at our next meeting and um, <coughs> it appears to me that his solution proposed solution is similar to what was already presented that we put on the ballot mm -hmm. that failed and um, <coughs> Sorry. I think that I think that we need to s clarify some how that with this, I think by this charge that we reiterated tonight and voted on again tonight, that we're not looking at an option right now for the fire company. Even though it's probably the most fiscally responsible way to go for the town, the needs of the town, we're not doing that. And our third option, the almost the Legos, for lack of a better word, to somehow add them on I think answers his his thing in my in my his proposal From looking at his letter I believe it he's thinking entirely differently um, <coughs> with a standalone police station um, and I think what we have to do is give him the opportunity to be heard um, and then decide if his proposal is good enough, saves enough money to warrant pursuing. And that's the, the call we have to make. And then once we make that call, either way, it's done. So, but I think what he is desperate for is to be heard and, and have us vet his idea. So, you know, I have a copy of his letter. I think you have I one. Um, I him, so yeah. reading it in the interim, looking at its merits and then deciding you know if it's something we wish to pursue is what what has to be done which but, is the reason that i think it's important that he be put on the agenda yeah so. do you think would it be appropriate to have the municipal chair of the municipal building committee sit in and hear that as well anyway. eric will be here i think because I think we've given, we have a committee. We've charged a committee with this. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, because of the specificity of the charge, the committee is not going to take in his report, his letter. You know, Eric is not going to look at it. He spent more time looking at John Ashton's thing than he wanted to, mm -hmm. and it slowed down the process. So we cannot ask Eric to look at everything that comes forward. It's got to be our job to look at it, evaluate it. And if we say, wow, Jim did a great job, and we really need to be looking at this, then we can ask Eric to look at it. But we have to decide as a board, yay or nay, first, rather than everyone having the opportunity to, to essentially pile work onto Eric's plate for him. Yeah, that's, my, that's a big concern of mine. I think the committee's been very welcoming of the new <coughs> ideas and alternative ideas. We're all hoping to come up with that idea that none of us have thought of. But like you mentioned, time is getting very close in order for us to have a comprehensive proposal ready, as well as the financing for town meeting. We've got to stick to our charge. I um, think that we have to always keep in sight <coughs> that, you know, no one is irreplaceable, but I would certainly hate to overburden Eric right now because if we ever lost him at this stage and juncture in the process, I uh, don't know what we do. 
Oh, it's not. Mm. It's not that. That I mean, that if, concerns if the me. The selectmen are to go out and recognize and vet everyone's idea all over again, which we already did once in town, and have Eric have to come and sit and you know, what's this? I mean, Jim's going to put it, and every citizen can put it on the agenda. I imagine we've done this once. If we go through this again, and Eric quits, we're done. I don't think Eric is going to How do you but know? How do you know? <coughs> he, he does this for nothing. I know. I mean, he's not getting paid. You got stuff for us to sign? Thank you. All right, we motion to, to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? <laughs> second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.